Well, you damn dirty rebels did it. You took Santa Fe. Hello and welcome to Civil War in Hindsight. I'm Lieutenant Tommy. With me, as always, is Prospector Johnny. And uh, in this week, Prospector, it's a little bit of mixed bag in terms oh. of good and bad news. And uh, rebels are on the move in the far, far west out in the territories. But uh, in, the, in the actual west? In the actual west. Yeah, the actual west. <laughs> west, oh, west. Shoot. Outside of the state's west. Maybe I should have caught a ride with some of them. Get out there a little bit quicker. And spring has sprung, Johnny. One month is going to come to an end. That's Another right. month is going to... Uh, come to be you know to begin it's it is nice it is warm outside it's Ooh, balmy yeah. now all of a sudden <laughs> yeah we're going to be complaining about being hot here in a minute yeah yeah we, we will be as february ends it is uh, mostly coming up union in the uh, final day of the 28th year of february with uh, union pressure as john pope moves his force south along the mississippi towards new madrid missouri so Again, an attempt to try to, to resecure all of the state of Missouri. There's that little okay. chunk in the southwest that's still there, floating around with Confederate control. Yeah, and so now they're they're just getting in place to retake. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, at this same uh, at the same time, Union forces move from Fayetteville to Osage Springs, Arkansas, and Trader President Davis is going to send a letter to Virginia Commander Joseph Johnson inquiring about the big cannons being secured and the lines of retreat being drawn up as a large Union force is gathering near his front, which more than doubles his current force. And and Trader President Davis is like, "Hey, can you make sure we don't lose those big guns? And <laughs> you might want to start thinking about getting out of here before it's too late." Yeah, don't even bother using them. They won't work for that. They will just fall into uh, the Union hands. So he's he's just trying to get them to take them and run. Just yeah, f- find a better defensive <laughs> position and try to to uh, to regroup all of his troops to mass them all into one location so that they have a little yeah. bit better chance so, uh, to defend against McClellan. I mean that make that seems to make sense. Yep, Uh, this big Union force, like I said, is under the command of McClellan, who was already supposed to move, but hasn't, and Lincoln is not too happy with it, but he's telling Lincoln, like, listen, the whole reason why we haven't moved was uh, because uh, I was waiting on pontoon boats to make a pontoon bridge across the river. Uh, Those boats got here, but they were too big for the bridge, so, like, I mean, yo, what was I supposed to do? I'm not... His put... They... His yeah, his, boats his boats were too big? for the pontoon like too, bridge were too big, I guess. I don't know like how that works. Too wide or? No idea. I think I, he's just making an excuse because I don't think he I, ever had any real desire to If move. they're that big, turn one sideways. Right? Or just like, use the rah. boat to go across a river and screw the bridge. And, it is a pontoon yeah. boat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it seems like maybe just laziness. I would, I'm going to go ahead maybe, and go with I, laziness. So as February ends, quick recap on the state of the Confederacy. And I say the state of the Confederacy because (laughs) the state of the Union is looking pretty good, but we got to talk about the state of the Confederacy. Well, except for the half of it that we've lost. Well, yeah, but but, but it's (laughs) looking good. So let's talk about them. Yeah, let's talk about them (laughs) and how bad they're doing in the year 1862. Uh, They have lost their largest industrial zone outside of Richmond with the fall of Nashville, which occurred last week. (laughs) They have lost their largest uh, uh, shipment of men, 12,000 men, through the surrender between the battles of Fort oh. Donaldson and Roanoke Island. So they've got an entire <laughs> army that's basically <laughs> gone. Yeah, surrendered. Yeah. Uh, the Kentucky defensive line is broken. There is a sizable Union force north and, or in North and South Carolina with the coastline secured and Fort Pickens in Florida standing strong, controlling pretty much any entryway into the Gulf. So... <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of supplies getting in and out of the Confederacy, as we have seen. Well, with- it's a good thing that they have spent so much time building up all their uh, crops and farms and everything so they can continue to feed their people. Yeah, which they they are having troubles feeding their people, because what we have seen with every significant battle that has, has taken place so far this uh, this war, the Confederates don't have the guns, they don't have the ammunition, and they don't have the food to feed yeah. Their soldiers. It's been like three or four now, times Tommy, they've I... taken territory, and we're like, "Well, we can't hold it because we don't have any way to hold it." Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about war, but our um, is, is like ammo and guns and food important for an army? Yeah, is that... I, I would. I would say you uh, want you're going to need you're going to need food, uh, mm-hmm. ammunition, and then clothing, and, kind of in that order. And if and you they don't, don't really have those have... things, they don't. Yeah, yeah that's not huh. working. <laughs> Well, so well, but good luck. Keep up, keep up the keep up the good fight down there, Confederates. So, don't give up now. 
Uh, while last year was a little bit of a uh, mixed bag, this year so far, I mean, granted, we're only two months in. It's pretty much all union. I mean, there shouldn't be too many more months that we have to talk about this, though, at, with uh, the, at the rate of uh, how things summer. are going right now. It's got to be over by summer at the rate it's going. Oh, we should just end it on the 4th of July again. Yeah, that'd, that'd be. be good. Yeah, the double celebrations. Yeah. On the 1st of March, Grant is ordered to move his force south down the Tennessee towards Eastport, Mississippi. Uh, Grant's two wooden gunboats uh, are going to set out in advance, and they're going to silence a Confederate battery at Pittsburgh Landing in Tennessee. Okay. Confederate General Beauregard will move his troops from Bowling Green, Kentucky, towards Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So at this point, almost the entire state of Kentucky is now abandoned by the Confederates. So it's all coming up it's Union. ours, right? And now, Dick, in, Kentucky's still neutral, right? Yeah, they're still neutral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But neutral at this point because I mean it's neutral because <laughs> they there have definitely been units on both sides that have had you know Kentucky volunteers join join both sides. So uh, yeah. it's neutral. Wink. Uh, and uh, dictator Davis Johnny, he's going to declare martial law in Richmond and begin arresting Union sympathizers. You know, not now. To, Wait just from... one second. You can't just go around declaring martial law and, and arresting supporters of the opposite side whenever you please. Where did he get this idea? I'm pretty sure he got it from Lincoln. And if you remember right, last week, uh, Congress, Confederate Congress, gave him the authority to do that. So, you know, to be fair, at least he waited for Congress I mean, to actually <laughs> give him is... the authority. Lincoln just did it. And said, that is less dictator. Yeah, Lin than, Lincoln just did it and said, uh, look, I know Lincoln it's... Still dictatory, but less. Yeah. I know I shouldn't have done it, but uh, give me give me approval now after I did uh, it. He's more of a shoot first, ask questions later kind, kind of, of guy kind that of guy, Lincoln is. Kind of guy, yep. And he gives his troops permission to do the same. <laughs> To anybody who disagrees with them. On the second, the remainder of the Confederate positions in Kentucky, that being Columbus, have withdrawn and pulled back to Tennessee, leaving Kentucky fully in Union control. Nice. Yeah. Confederate General H. H. Next. Yeah, Confederate General H. H. Sibley in New Mexico territory is going to threaten Albuquerque as he leaves uh, a pretty sizable force in that direction. Uh, the federal forces there are going to withdraw with with hopes of finding a little bit better defendable location. Again, this is way out in the territories where there are not a lot of federal troops. Anyways. I was going to say, have we sent out? Any additional support or anything no, out the, west? The, it's just kind of what yeah. the standing force is. The only thing that's out west in the territories is just what, what happened to be there. That's why Texas was a, able to easily kind of push aside what forces were out there from the Union side. And uh, and looks like it's kind of going to be the same to, to New Mexico territory. And remember, Sibley's ultimate goal here is to get to California. Now, California itself is is still, you know, a union state, still union supporting, and still has a sizable union force out there. So okay. I don't so think he, he'll be he's super successful. He's fighting through the riffraff to get to the, the, the final uh, opponent. Uh, that's his goal, I guess, huh. yes. Uh, which, of course, you know, you do have a sizable supply of, uh, of of supplies out in California, plus not to mention the gold reserves that are out there that we've yeah, uh, but you do you know, found get from the there. 49. It's a big old desert. There's a big old there. desert. <laughs> On March 3rd, Union General Pope begins the siege of New, Ma New Madrid, Missouri, while Union forces secure Martinsburg, West Virginia. So more Union territories coming up. Union. Yep. Robert E. Lee is going to be recalled from South Carolina. He, if you recall, he was promoted and sent to South Carolina for the defense, okay. which he did right. not a great job of. Yeah, yeah. So they they pulled him out. Like, yeah, you know what? Maybe that spot's not for you. Let's. Uh, <laughs> so they're gonna get they're you gonna somewhere else. They're gonna pull Robert E. Lee and, uh, and Trader President Davis is gonna recall him to uh, Richmond and and give him the position of military advisor. So uh, <laughs> basically, mean... it's just like hey, you gotta sit next to the principal at the principal's office. I mean, come on, that's what a uh, garbage demotion. Yeah, that good. must so, feel like I don't know what the what the chain of command there is, but it sounds like a from demotion. going a general in the field to be like, hey, you know what? Why don't you just come over here? You'll go to West Virginia and you'll advise some people. Yeah, not West and Virginia, we'll, Johnny Richmond, Virginia, or Virginia, Virginia. Virginia, Virginia yeah. Yes, I'm uh, apologies, uh, but yeah, he'll and then. Um, well, we may or may not take your advice. We may, we may or may not take it. Uh, <laughs> Why don't you put it in your idea jar over there? <laughs> I do like the idea of him having. An idea jar. Also, quick note here, Johnny. General Halleck, head of the West, uh, is going to accuse Grant of not appropriately reporting back during the Battle of Fort Donelson. 
other misconduct is going to be charged on him as well, including – um, remember when he was a uh, captain in the whole Mexican war and he kind of got demoted and booted Wait. out of the military for drinking? Yeah. Oh, no. He's back on the wagon. Off there's, the wagon. There's some uh, – yeah, off the wagon. Yeah, there's some off. There's some claims yeah. that he's uh, he's oh, been man. drinking again. On the, on the job or after the job? No, like on the job. I, get, so. I guess – I guess when you're in his position during this time, there's not really an off the job so much. No. But, um, so wh- okay. So what's what's dealing gonna with these? Yeah, while gone? dealing with these allegations, Grant is going to be pulled from. Uh, he's not demoted, uh, but he's not going to be in charge of leading those troops down to Tennessee. Instead, that's going to be given is he over an to. Advisor? Yeah, he's basically yeah. He's <laughs> I guess he's going to be an advisor to Halleck. Uh, so he's going to be placed uh, C.F. Smith in command of the expedition from Fort Henry, uh, and while Grant has to deal with these accusations. Hmm. On now the dealing fort, with these accusations, is he, is he going to have to go to like a trial type situation? I, I, at this point, I'm not entirely sure. I, he's is he just, just making furiously is, telegraphing back and forth. I think part of what happened is is Grant said to Hal, like, I'm going to take the fort in, like, two days. And he didn't take the fort in two days. And then he didn't appropriately report back to Halleck as to what the hell was going on. Yeah, okay. And then the media got a hold of Grant and was like, he's the hero of Fort Donaldson, unconditional surrender, Grant. And then I think Halleck got a little yeah, jelly. Little, little, little and it might be there. Yeah. Uh, they might be fabricating some of these accusations against <sighs> them. Uh, we'll figure, yeah, well, that's Lincoln's you know what, that's problem been, to figure that... out. Yeah, that's been one of the most frustrating. Real quick, the most frustrating parts about this war so far have been the the little boy playground mentality that our generals seem to have. It's like they're not working as a team. It's everybody's trying to get the glory and everybody's trying to be, you know, the hero. You know, just do your damn job. Work together. You're on the same team. Does it matter who's? You know, does it matter who ultimate? Like, if, as long as the union wins, like that should yeah. be the goal here. As long as the union's restored, that should be a goal. This, yeah. Th- there's a lot of I want to get there first. I want to be the hero mentality. Yeah. It, it's it's just a bunch of grown babies leading our union to try to take back another set of grown, grown babies, babies that are doing the same thing in the south. I'm sure. Yeah. Pretty much. On the 4th, Confederates are going to take Santa Fe, New Mexico territory, as Union forces pull back to Fort Union uh, in the northeast, which is the best defensible position that they have. Um, so that kind of sucks. I really like yeah. Santa Fe. That was that's I like that city out in the territories. A couple of good uh, taverns out there that I explored the last time I was yeah. down in that, that, that region. And uh, nothing but else. Th- not all bad news here, though, Johnny, because Union forces in Florida are going to take <laughs> Amelia Island, so more territory down in Florida getting secured. All right, we'll trade. We'll we'll give you we'll give you a little bit out west in the desert, and we'll take you, we'll take your beach in Florida. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna take your beach in Florida, which is with a much much prettier this time of year than the desert. <laughs> The U.S. Senate is going to confirm Lincoln's appointment of Andrew Johnson as military governor of Tennessee, which is also still hilarious because we haven't actually secured the state of Tennessee. We've only got Nashville, but I guess he's going to be the military governor of Nashville. Ah, That's good enough. Secured, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We we basically took Tennessee. And again, maybe you just keep on saying something. You you tell the papers, and then everybody's just kind of like, oh, oh, I guess I did get it. So it's fine. Yeah, it's 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 a point. We got it. It's my job now. Uh, and the South is, uh, Johnny, having some reenlistment problems, and Uh-oh. morale is super low as soldiers are not returning from <laughs> furlough in Virginia. Why? They see all the bad in, in the West, and they're like, well, the war's over. Let's go home. And they're just not uh, coming back from their furloughs. I mean, why would you? Which is a problem because McClellan's force is now on the move into Virginia. Ooh, and yeah. uh, and nobody's coming back to protect And there's it. a bunch of people who are like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm just going to go home. Yeah, they probably want food. Yeah, they're they probably, probably like, oh, at home I get meals. This is nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> can I can I have that here in the field, please? <laughs> no. no uh, speaking of those movements, on March fifth, uh, McClellan is in the move into Virginia with his forces underneath Nathaniel Banks advancing from Harper's Ferry towards Wester, uh, Winchester, Virginia, uh, leading to a very small uh, uh, skirmish at Bunker Hill. Johnny, not that Bunker Hill though. It's a different Bunker Hill. It's not the Bunker it, Hill from the Revolutionary <laughs> War that you're thinking of. It's a different bunker. Hill. How many bunker hills do we have, and why? Apparently, at least two of them. <laughs> why? They're why so many hills. bunker hills? 
It's a different one. Uh, yeah, you uh, just got to complicate things, right? It, yeah, we do. Uh, Johnny, this week is going to come to an end on March 6th with fighting beginning at Pea Ridge, Arkansas. So this is the Union's large advance down into Arkansas. Oh, Confederates okay. are finally uh, responding we're, to that. So they we're engaging... Yeah, uh, starting to, yes. During the day and into the late afternoon, uh, four federal divisions under Samuel R. Curtis are entrenched in well-defended positions at Sugar Creek, uh, which is just north of Fayetteville, Arkansas. No, division, remind me. A thousand men? Uh, no, that's uh, so you've got a, a company which is like a, a hundred guys, a, a regiment which is a thousand guys. Um, is it division next? Battalion? So like we're tens of thousands of tens men. of thousands, yeah, yeah. You, is, you get it's, it's, it's much. Yeah, it's like five thousand, I think, is a division. All right. It's Somebody leave the breakdown 000. in the comments. Anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, look, I'm just a low-ranking. Yeah, you. Yeah, why would you know? Uh, Ordnance department. This? I don't know. Whatever. Person it's who like, has to outfit all of division, these different companies division, and divisions. <laughs> division <laughs> is bigger than regiment, <laughs> and regiments around a thousand. I think divisions like four regiments attached. All right, cheers, Tommy. Anyway, we got tens of thousands of men digging in. Uh, that's got to be not a good feeling for the residents of Arkansas. That's got to be not a good feeling for them. Uh, Confederate forces underneath Earl Van Dorn have been trying to dislodge them with no success during this first day. Uh, Dorn realizes a frontal attack will be suicide as the Union is very well entrenched, even though this is an odd position here. The Confederates actually do outnumber um, oh. Curtis on the field. Uh, even with all... Yeah, even with Curtis's like, four divisions, yeah. They're, they're and so there. it's just the advantage here for the Union is how in. well dug in they are. And and it's, dug in means what? That they have they have dug fighting holes. Like they've got like dug trench barricades. Yeah, yeah, holes and with, with, set with up barricades their in front of them. Yes, and, yep, yep. Okay. they're entrenched. All yep. right. Um, so they're going to attempt, instead of doing a whole frontal assault, his idea is that he's actually going to attack uh, from the north at Pea Ridge, and he's going to move his troops through the cover of darkness to try to do a surprise attack in the morning, which, Johnny, we're going to have to wait for next week to see how oh, that all plays out. Come on, what? And what? Just what a dick move. Yeah, move, move his troops. I mean, come on. Yeah, Early morning attack. sneak attack? Yep. Yep, yep. Damn, that ain't Christmas. And very final note here, Johnny. Uh, it appears that Confederates have completed their secret weapon, the armor-plated CSS Virginia, which was built off the hull of the Merrimack uh, that was captured. Uh, well, I use that term loosely. When we sunk it, <laughs> leaving and surrendering, uh, they uh, they rose it up and then built a yeah built a secret boat on top of it. You know, a secret armored boat on top of it. So it's the I, CSS so they, Virginia. Just what put plating around? Just use that as a yeah, frame. They used the, uh, essentially? They used the, yeah, they used Yeah, they used the. They added a steam engine. It used the the wooden hull as the base of the Merrimack, and then on top of that, they put a bunch of steel plates or iron oh, okay. plates. Yeah. Kind of trying to mimic what the North had built. Then it sounds like it's similar. Well, type except of... for theirs is wood base, and ours is actual all metal. And <laughs> and I'll bet here, their turret doesn't spin. The turret does not spin. No, they have no turrets. Nope. Nope. Uh, So the CSS Virginia is complete. Uh, It has been spotted Mm -hmm. in Hampton Roads. And from what I'm hearing, uh, the USS Monitor is on its way down to Hampton Roads to address this. So (laughs) uh, I believe we're going to have two battles that we're going to be talking about next week. Have a little meeting is what they're going to do. They're just going to say hi. Hey, how's your warship? uh, Here's my warship. (laughs) I don't think it's going to be so friendly. You don't think so? Huh? Mm. We'll We'll have to wait. Yes, stay tuned. See what happens next week. That's it for Civil War in Hindsight. If you enjoy Civil War in Hindsight, check out Historic Hindsight. We talk about all kinds of fun things like train robbers that bodies got mummified and sent into a weird haunted house theme park. 